Hi, Orwell. Thank you. Um, thank you for the lovely, lovely introduction and, and for making me welcome here. This is my first time in the States. And I was telling some of the people who I was speaking to just before the event, I'm due to get married next month. And <laughs> thank you. And the, the honeymoon plans were to actually come back to New York. So of, a, of an angry fiance at home who says that I've ruined the experience because I'm getting here before. But look, good afternoon, distinguished guests. It's wonderful to be here with all of you this afternoon. Um, as I say, I've really welcomed the, the, the welcome you've given me to this city. And I'm honored to be able to stand here before all of you, newly, uh, newly appointed as one of the, the youngest mayors of Belfast. I know I'm the second youngest, but Nal probably won't mind me saying it. The colleague of mine who was the youngest, I looked younger than what Nal did. Uh, <laughs> Nal and a couple of years, years younger than myself when he got into the role. But look, it's, it's fantastic to be among friends who have continuously and tirelessly supported and championed the city of Belfast for many, many years. I lead this Belfast delegation to further strengthen the bond between Belfast and the United States, and in particular, our close friendship with our allies on the East Coast. And what a memorable year we've had since my friend and colleague, Tina Black, stood here before all of you this day last year. With your help, we've been able to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. As a young person born in 1984, I like to think that I'm somebody who's actually reaped the benefit of the Good Friday Agreement. So thank you to all of those people who were able to achieve such a magnificent reward for, for the generation that came behind. We felt very fortunate to be able to share a lot of that progress that's been made in our city during that prestigious and very welcome visit of the President of the United States, Joe Biden, quite recently to mark the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. We we're also delighted that President, President Biden appointed Joe Kennedy III as the Special U.S. Envoy for Economic Affairs to the North. Joe, who's actually currently in Belfast at the minute, um, opening one of the, the great new assets that we have in the, the Lower Falls area, has already dedicated so much time getting to understand and know the lay of the land of Belfast. We look forward to being able to work with Joe over the coming months to further seek to unlock those barriers to further inclusive economic growth within the city of Belfast. I really appreciate you making the time to be here with us this morning, especially since many of you have had to make considerable journeys to be here. One of the priorities that I have over the coming year is trying to ensure that Belfast young people have continued access to training skill and employment opportunities, many of which exist thanks to FDI and investment that's come from the US. As a young person myself, I'm looking forward to later in the year being able to, to welcome so many young leaders as they come to our city for the One Young World Conference. And friends, we have so much progress to be able to share with all of you since the last time that we were here speaking. We've continued to enjoy a really healthy pipeline of US foreign direct investment throughout the year thanks to the Invest NI and the efforts of Andrea Hogan and her team. Last year, we were pleased to welcome digital companies such as Insider Inc, Harness, and Aqua, who have now got software development teams based in the city center of Belfast. They're not alone, and we estimate there's roughly around 100 US businesses in the city doing business, employing over 12,000 members of staff. And since we last spoke, we've seen some real significant regeneration changes as well. We saw the completion of the stunning 450 million pound University of Ulster campus going online. And we're now moving in the rapid phase within the Belfast City Region deal, which represents over one billion pounds worth of investment being unlocked over the next decade, creating over 20,000 jobs and further strengthening some of those regions offerings in growth sectors, including life and health sciences, digital and creative industries, advanced manufacturing and regeneration. And at the minute, as part of that city region deal, we're actually procuring the design team for a brand new 100 million pound visitor destination center in the north end of the city center, neighboring that Ulster University campus. And what, a, what an achievement that'll be for us. That was part of the city center that had been crying out for investment for years, and now we have it. We have a, a university that's welcomed over 15,000 15, staff members and students, and we will have that visitor destination completely changing the landscape of the north end of the city centre. We also have the £380 million Weavers Cross Transport Hub also underway and progressing fairly quickly. State-of-the-art train station bringing passengers travelling from Dublin and back in the heart of the city centre. And a team has now been appointed for us to develop the Belfast Dublin Economic Corridor Programme at PACE. And just briefly turning to tourism to mention it, 
progress that's been made over the last number of years has been fantastic. At this, from this time last year, we've seen a 23% increase in hotel occupancy rates. We have over 170 cruise ships due into the city in this current season, 15 of which will be first time visitors. This is incredible when you reflect that over 25 years ago, we had none. And today, for us, it provides an incredibly valuable platform to be able to share the ambitions that we have and to invite you to continue to work in partnership and be invest with us in the city. We've just completed an expression of interest process seeking partners for a 270 pound mixed tenure residential development project. We've had over 40 proposals coming back in to meet that current and future housing demand on four key sites. There's an exciting opportunity there for investors and developers to work with us to deliver new sustainable neighborhoods. And of course, later in the year, we're gonna have a number of events taking place in the city. I invite you to be able to join us for the NI Investment Summit on the 12th and 13th of September, which is an initiative being run and to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the, the Good Friday Agreement, but also we aim to connect an international investors with some of our own homegrown businesses to be able to showcase and profile our innovation and deep technological strengths. And I would love to see some of you there. I also know, because a couple of people were telling me beforehand, and Martin's only after giving it a plug, we're expecting a large New York legislator delegation coming for the international homecoming at the end of September. I would encourage you to engage with us when you're there, to go and visit some of the assets and the sites that I'm talking about here today as well. We want to continue promoting cooperation on so many levels where we have such rich and long-standing connections across culture, heritage, powerful family connections, music, tourism, and of course, education. On Tuesday evening, I had the honor of being able to attend the wonderful and energetic play, Good Vibrations, which really epitomizes and captures that cultural and music heritage that we have in the city of Belfast. I know we'll end up hearing from the lyric today through the, the course of the events, but hopefully, if you haven't already, some of you will be able to go and actually get, get a watch at the show. It's fantastic. It's running until the 19th of July in the Irish Arts Centre. And just coming towards the end, on behalf of the city of Belfast as a whole, I would like to pay a special tribute and express our deep gratitude to the US government at a city and a national level for the unfailing support that they've given us through thick and through thin. And the all of you, too many to mention by name, but actually in events, the honorary chairs of New York, New Belfast, who work so hard to ensure that these enduring links progress. And of course, to you, Comptroller Dinapoli, thank you for the unwavering support that you've given the city of Belfast. We're very keen to continue this conversation on so that we can continue to strengthen our engagement with the United States, to build on the momentum of President Biden's visit and the appointment of Joe Kennedy. There's no doubt that this is a very critical time for us for Irish history, for the relationship between Ireland, for the UK, and for the United States. Despite the challenges that we face, and everybody faces challenges, I can assure you that Belfast's energy and drive to build a stronger, more diverse community and a more vibrant, modern, and inclusive economy has never been stronger. I look forward to being able to meet many of you uh, personally during this time after the event and during the event. A huge thank you once again for having us here. You've made me feel really welcome, and it's something I'll not forget, so appreciate it. Go to me, go. Gorimilgov, almost got that out. Oh.